talking about overlock stitches. We're going to show you which foot and which stitches to use on this machine, plus a handy dandy reference that you might not know is right here at your fingertips of how to do it. So what we're doing is we're looking for a stitch that's going to jump over the edge. Make the, the fabric stop unraveling. Sometimes after you sew something and you wash it, things start to kind of unravel. You get strings from the dryer and oh, before you know it, you've got a mess. And what you need to do is take care of kind of back in the day we used to zigzag the edges. I'm going to show you a better stitch. Now on the Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25, we are going through all the free video tutorials and stitches and settings and how to take care of it and clean it uh, that you can take a look at. We'll have a link in the description below and also at the end of this video, there's a link to the playlist where you can start back at the beginning and binge watch them from the first video all the way into the buttonholes and advanced techniques that we have done videos on. So I hope you'll enjoy those. So one of the things that we are going to peek at is now this handy dandy reference. Now, as I pull it out, I'm reminded that there's actually two levels to this. So one is for when you are working with regular fabrics, like woven fabrics, and the bottom one is when you're working on knit fabrics. Let's explain the difference. So yes, in your manual, there'll be descriptions of each of these symbols. So if you're not familiar with them or you forget, do double check which are for what techniques. So speaking of techniques, we are seeing a seam, an overcast, an overcast and seam, a basting stitch, a blind hem, a regular hem, and a buttonhole. Now, right here is what differentiates page one and page two. Page two actually has a picture of kind of a knit type fabric as well as a leather or vinyl fabric column. And what this is doing is it's allowing you to tell the machine which fabric you're using. You pick the stitch you want to do. So for example, a overlock and seam stitch, and then it's going to show you which stitch you should pick which foot you should put on, what your tension should be at, three to five in this case, and what stitch length and width, L and W, the machine should be set at. So let's just start first by picking the overlock stitch. So as we turn this dial, now I see one that looks very similar, but do note one will jump one way, and that is not it, and one jumps the other way. This one is for the blind hem. Can you see down here that stitch jumps to the left, and the one we're working, looking for, jumps to the right. And it's the first one. So we're going to go ahead and set the machine's length and width to it. And it recommends length should be set at one. So we'll shorten the stitch length and width, it says go to five. So we're going to set it right at five. You can adjust that to be a little narrower or a little wider, but five is what it recommends. And I always say start there, but let's look, let's see what foot it recommends. Notice it is showing us a foot J. J is actually a foot that comes with it. Kind of looks like it only has one toe, but down in this area where the stitch is going to take place, there's a little pin, kind of a, a, a metal piece that the stitch is going to form over. So if you've ever had where you've done zigzag along the edge and you're kind of on and then off, on and off, and that's going to secure the fabrics from um, unraveling, that's what you're after. But sometimes that fabric with just a zigzag kind of curls. And what that foot does, when you have the right foot on for the technique, you will find that little pin is going to be a support system. So as the stitch is formed, it is not going to curl the stitch and make it go around. It'll keep the fabric nice and flat. So lift up your presser foot if it's down, slide the foot directly towards you, attach foot J just by pushing it on. Uh, don't push down, that would kind of interfere. You can even slide the thread kind of down and underneath that particular uh, foot kind of in that area. And without doing anything else, let's just go ahead and see how this stitch is sewn. So a couple stitches on the left side, a jump over on the right. This is one stitch where usually people are always asking, well, where do I guide this? And here's your little cue. If you put your fabric even with this toe right there on the right side, so when you actually see the needle jump over to the right side, over that little pin, can you see it forming over it down there? It is going into air. So let's just take a look. My needle is partially down. Let's turn our hand wheel towards us. 
bring that needle all the way up and the take up lever to its highest position. Let me also show you the last thing. I've lifted up the presser foot, but look, the last stitch is actually still stuck on that little pin. So all you need to do is push it straight back and out and then you can cut. But here, while we're right here, let's just look at how pretty that stitch is. It's technically a seam as well. So we can actually see the, the two fabrics, since I use two fabrics here, we can actually see that it's actually holding that together and overlocking it all at once. And that's why we called it a, a seam and overcast. So because there's enough straight stitches here, it is creating a seam all while doing the jump over to the right and securing those edges so when I go to wash it, it's not going to unravel. So that's the beauty of a overcast and seam stitch on the Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25 sewing machine. If you haven't tried that out, never fear, try that on your next project. You know that it's going to be washed and handled a lot and trust me, it is worth that extra time overlocking your edges.